Hey, good morning. It's time with 10 with Pastor Len, and it is Wednesday. I want to say thank you for joining. I love each and every one of you. Lori and I both love each and every one of you. And we mean that from the bottom of our hearts. Thank you for what you do for us. Personally, prayers, encouraging words. Thank you for what you do for the ministry, your financial support. Uh, without it, you know, we, we, we could not be. So we thank you for all you do from the bottom of our hearts. And for those of you who are looking for ways to bless us financially and to give, we're gonna be putting the address and the ways to give on the screen. And uh, thank you in advance. And that's all I'll mention about that. So yesterday we kicked off a um, series of talks I wanna to do to crush condemnation, guilt, shame, and feelings of inadequacies because the pulpit is filled with preaching, mixture and legalism that, that keeps people burdened down with those feelings. And when you have feelings of condemnation, guilt, shame, inadequacies, how could you boldly go before the throne of grace? Hebrews chapter four, verse 16, let us come boldly before the throne of grace. How could you boldly go before the throne of grace when you feel, you know, like a failure, when you feel like, you know, you know, you just the same old, same old screw up. You know, you're a sinner. You're a sinner saved by grace. You're always going to be a sinner. You know, you have feelings of condemnation. You feel guilty about your life, guilty about your decisions, guilty about the things you've done, guilty about relationships, guilty about, you know, anything and everything. You feel shame. You feel inadequate. How, how could you go boldly before the throne of grace and expect to receive mercy? and grace in your time of need. How, how can you boldly go? How could you be confident in your professions? How could you be confident in your confessions? You can't. Religion has riddled the children of God and the people of God with guilt, shame, condemnation. And we're smashing that today. And I hope that, oh, you go back again and again and again and you read Hebrews chapter 10. It's a beautiful chapter. And so it's important to understand. It's important to understand how God sees you. How God sees you. And it's the only way he sees you. God doesn't see you the way religion sees you. My goodness, the first 30 years of my Christianity Oh boy, I believe God was ready to spit me out of his mouth. Revelation chapter 215, I believe it is. Lukewarm, I was lukewarm. I wasn't on fire, man. I was, you know, I tried to be on fire. Oh man, how do you be on fire? How do you be on fire? How much do you read? How much do you pray? I'm, you know, I, I tried to be on fire, but I, you know, I know I wasn't on fire. I wasn't on fire. So if I wasn't on fire, I was lukewarm. If I was lukewarm, he's getting ready to spit me out of his mouth. I was a worm. I was nothing but a worm. I was, just, I was just a sinner, man. I was a sinner. I was always a sinner. A sinner saved by grace. And you know what I decided for many years? If I'm just a sinner saved by grace, I'm going to go out there and be the best sinner I could be then. You know, and then occasionally, and once in a while, you know, religion would hook me and I would just go up to the altar and weep and cry and, you know, repent and start all over again. Start all over again. In fact, there was a song by, oh my God, my gosh, my goodness, I can't, believe, I can't remember who it was, but it was, it, basically, it, it said, here I am, O Lord. It's it's me again. I know I'm here again to confess the same old sin. I don't know whether I can do it. I mean, this this was one of the songs, and we used to sing this all the time because we used to be proud of that fact. Do you understand? Religion had us proud of the fact that we would come to the altar over and over and over again confessing the same old sin. You know, that was our, that was our MO. Not me, not anymore. Now we go up to the altar and we confess our righteousness. And we confessed our holiness and we can, we confess our blamelessness. This is the way that God sees us. The only way that God sees us. If, if he can't say it about Jesus and he doesn't say it about Jesus, he will not say it about us and he can't say it about us. For by one sacrifice, he perfected forever those he sanctified. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 14. And you know, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 25. I stumbled across this in my Bible the other day. And it said, God's desire 
His only desire is for us to know that as he looks at us, he looks at us as if sin never existed. This is why Hebrews chapter 10 also says, sins and iniquities I remember no more. First, uh, Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. The old man, the old nature, old things have passed away. Behold, all things new have come. So Isaiah 40, 43, Isaiah 43 and verse 25. I, even I, am he that blotteth out, blotted out your transgressions for my own sake. And I will not remember your sins. That's beautiful. Ask yourself this. Why does religion want to keep you remembering your sins? Well, in sincerity, they don't know the differences of the covenants. In sincerity. Oftentimes, for wrong reasons, it keeps them in business. But Isaiah 43, 25, it's me. It's me, Daddy God, who loves you so much. I blot out your transgressions. And I remember them no more. This is why Paul, in Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17, he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. The gospel of Christ, you see, the good news, the too good to be true news about Christ. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. I used to preach the law for righteousness. Not anymore. Jesus is the end of the law for righteousness. Romans chapter 10 verse 4. I'm not ashamed of this gospel, this gospel of Christ, because it is the power of God unto salvation to all who believe, to, to all who believe, for therein lies the righteousness of God to the Jew and the Gentile. For just as it is written, the just that you and I shall live by faith. The thing about God is, since the beginning of time, time, I, God is eternal. Uh, he created time for us. So even when there was no time, even before there was a garden, even before, before he said, light be, and, 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 and the stars, and the moon, and the, and the seas, and the land. And the, even before, before, way before, before time. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4, and, and 4 through 6. According as he has chosen us in him. God chose you to be in him, to be part of him, to be one with him. According as he has chosen us, that's you and I, in him, before the foundations of the world. That we would be holy and without blame before him in love. This is how God chose us. This is how God saw us. This is how God sees us. Having predestined us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself. Jesus Christ, faith in Jesus Christ, brings us back to that place where God has always seen us. Where God has always believed us to be. Faith in Jesus Christ brings us back to before the foundations of the world. According to, to good pleasure of his will, this is his will. Us before him, us in him, us with him, holy, blameless, and in love. To the praise of the glory of his grace. Too good to be true news. This is our covenant. This is our gospel. 
wherein he has made us accepted in the beloved. One with God, one with Jesus, united with Jesus, united with God, accepted in the beloved, accepted in the beloved. This is the club. This, this is the club. This is the one you want to be involved in, a member of, one with, the inner circle of God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and you and I, because the only way he sees us is holy and blameless and in love. And in that place, there is no room for guilt, shame, condemnation, and feelings of inadequacies. This is Pastor Len. I hope you were blessed. We'll see you tomorrow morning as we continue.